Hi, I'm Angelica from FTC Team 15772 Brady Goats. In this video, I'm going to show you how to program a servo in position mode for buttons in the teleoperated period in blocks programming. So first you want to create a new op mode and name it something meaningful. So I'll name mine teleop underscore servo underscore buttons. Then after that, you can press OK. So now you can set up the blocks programming environment however you do it personally. So I'll exit out of these two pieces. So now you want to initialize the servo. So you wanted to go to one certain position at the beginning of the match, especially if your robot would otherwise be out of the sizing cube. So you can go to actuators and servo. And then you'll see some of the servo um, blocks here. So for now, we'll do set servo position to zero and put that under the put initialization blocks here. So that will happen once you press the init button, but not before you press the play button. So after that, you want to go to logic and then drag an if do else if do else block. And you can put that in this repeat while block after the put loop blocks here. So while the program's running, you'll be wanting to have it so whenever you press certain buttons, the servo goes to a certain position. So since this is not exactly how we want it because we want to have three ifs, you can go to the settings piece here. And then here you'll be able to customize the if block. So you can drag out the else and put in an else if. So you'll have three different positions that the servo can go to with this method. So the first button that you'll want to do is the gamepad one and then the Y button. So you can go to gamepad and then scroll down to gamepad one dot Y. And you can plug that piece into the first if. Into the um, second if, so this else if, you can first go to logic and then this and. So you'll have it for in this program so you can press the B or the X button, and then it'll still do the same action. So now to get those two buttons, you can go to gamepad and get the gamepad one dot B, and then gamepad again, get the gamepad one dot X. And instead of having the and, so that would be pressing two buttons at once, you'll change that to an or. So you can press either of those buttons and it'll stu still do the action that we will add later. So after that, for your third else if, or third if, but the second else if, you can go to gamepad and go to the top to gamepad1.a. So that will have your four main buttons on the right side of your controller. So now you can set the different servo positions depending on what button you are pressing. So you can go to servo and then the set position again and put for the Y. For this one, we can put 0.5 but you can really put whatever value works for your robot. So after that, you can go again to servo, drag another servo position block under B and X. And then in there, you can just keep it at zero. And then for gamepad one, for if you press the A button, you can go to servo, drag this servo dot position block, and then change this to one. So the range of the servo, if you're doing the position mode, is from 0 to 1, and you can do any decimals in between that. So that's why we have 0 as the lowest number and 1 as the highest number. If you wanted to see what position you're at for that servo, you can also add telemetry. So you can go to telemetry, go to telemetry, add data with key and number. So you'll be able to name whatever you want this data to be. So I'll name it servo position in case I want to track whatever position the servo's at. And then for number, you can go back to under actuators, you can go to servo. And then instead of the set position, you'll actually get the position. So it'll be this block right underneath it. And you can drag that to number. So I hope you enjoyed learning about how to program a servo in position mode for buttons in the tele teleoperated period.
In this video, I'm going to show you how to program a servo in continuous mode for buttons or a joystick in the teleoperated period in blocks programming. So first you want to create a new program. So go to create a new op mode and name it something meaningful. So I'll name mine continuous underscore servo underscore control. And then after you're done with that, click OK. So I'll exit out of these two things. Okay, first we want to get an if, do, else if, do, and then else block because we'll have two ifs for either of the buttons and then the else for the joystick control. So you can go to logic and then this if, do, else if, do, else block. You can drag that under put loop blocks here. So that means that while the program's running, it's going to be running whatever is in this loop. So it'll end up running this if do, else if do, else block. So after that, you can get maybe two buttons that you think would work with your servo, however you need to use it. So for now, I'm going to go to gamepad and then get gamepad1.a. So basically with a continuous servo, you can set it so that you're running at a certain speed, like variable, like an actual motor on a drivetrain or you could have it running at a single speed, like maybe on an intake or something like that. So I'll be showing you like first the buttons and then how to do it with the joystick. So you've got the first button, which is the uh, button A. And now if you want to go to actuators on the left, and then after you configure it, it should show up as a CR servo for a continuous rotation. And so this looks very similar to if you had DC motor with the direction blocks or power blocks. So we'll be actually using the servo blocks though. And you can drag out one of the set servo power blocks and put that in the first if do. So from there, you can make the power for the servo, whatever you feel you want from zero to um, 1.0. So for now, I'm going to set mine to 0.7, which would be 70% power. So now you might want to use another button to maybe stop it, but I'm going to use another button to go the opposite direction, but still continuous rotation. So it just keeps going and keeps going. So you can go to gamepad and get another button. So I'll use gamepad one dot B and put that in that else if. From there, you can get another servo power block. So go to continuous rotation servo and get another set servo power and put that under the else if. So now you might want to change this to be a different speed, like maybe full speed or reverse the speed, but I'll set mine to negative 0.7. So going the same speed as if you pressed button A, but just in the reverse direction. So now, since you're like, let's say you're not pressing either button A or button B. So you might want the servo to either stop or maybe you want to be able to control it then with a joystick. So for now, we're going to use a joystick and we can see how that works. So you can go to continu continuous rotation servo and get another servo power block with the set in front of it and put that in the else. So since you'll be doing it with a joystick, you can go to gamepad one and scroll down until you see a joystick you want to use. So I'll use left stick Y on gamepad one and put that where that one would is. So what that will do is that if you're not pressing the joystick or the two buttons, then it'll just have the servo at zero power, so stopped. But if you weren't pressing either of these buttons and you wanted to move the joystick, maybe at like half power or full power, then you'd be able to change that speed depending on the joystick by using this in the else part of the code. If you want to show the servo power, especially when you're using a joystick to see what the power is since it varies, you should put in a telemetry so you can see that output on the phone. So you can go on the left to utilities, scroll down until you see telemetry, and get one of these telemetry add data with a key and a number. And you can put that before this called telemetry update, which is still in the loop. So let's rename the key for that. So what will show up like to describe the value. So I'm going to name mine to be servo power. And for the number, that's the number that will be outputting. So you want to go back up here to continuous rotation servo 
and get the servo.power block, but not the set one. So the one that you can input this into number. And so now when you run this code, you would be able to press the A button and see the servo go to 70% speed. Press the B button and see it reverse, but still at 70% speed. And then if you're not pressing either button, but you, maybe you're pressing the joystick, you'll see that on the left stick Y. And then on the phone, you should see an output for the servo power. Here. I hope you enjoyed learning about how to program a servo in continuous mode for buttons or joystick in the teleoperated period. To find out more about our team, please visit the links in the video description. Thank you for watching.